Hello. Today we will be presenting Measuring More to Learn More from the Block Design Test, a literature review. So what is the Block Design Test? The Block Design Test is a cognitive assessment that is used to measure visual spatial ability. It uh, requires participants to use a set of colored blocks to recreate a visual design. You can see an example of this right here on the left. It's particularly notable because this cognitive assessment allows the participants problem solving, um, problem solving strategy to be visualized through their ongoing manual actions. It is commonly used in research, educational, and clinical settings. Part, uh, performance for uh, this task is measured using two measures. So first we have time. How much time does it take for the participant to complete the test? Second, we have accuracy. Can the participant accurately recreate the design? So why don't we take a look at an interesting example that might arise during the block design test. So during the test, blocks can be placed in any order that the participants want. So in this example right here on the right, uh, we have the order of the block placement visualized. So one means it's the first block being placed down, two means it's the second, et cetera, et cetera. So suppose we have two different participants um, and they're both trying to sit, solve the same exact uh, test item. And we know that they both take the same exact amount of time to complete it, and they're both accurate. However, we can see that the order in which they place their blocks down is very different. So the par participant on the left chose a very systematic manner to um, solve their task. So they solve it row by row and um, top to bottom. And we can see that the person on the right has chosen a much more random approach to solving this test. So clearly we can see that there is something going on here in terms of differences in their cognitive processes and approach to solving the task. However, if we only looked at the two traditional uh, scoring items, which are time and accuracy, these two participants would look exactly the same. So, we found this to be really interesting. And um, the, in the 100 years that the block design test has been uh, researched, other researchers have also found um, this similar concept to be interesting. Um, and they have used additional variables to measure um, cognitive differences in um, various populations and between different people. And in our paper, we have examined the literature and made three contributions. So first, we identify 25 previously examined independent and dependent variables on the block design test. Second, we present a sample of the research on each variable. And finally, we suggest variables of interest for future block design research. So this table here shows all 25 of the additional variables that we have identified through our literature review. Each of um, the variables shows, uh, also shows the number of papers in this column right here um, that have studied the variable. And note that some of these papers have studied more than one variable. In our review, we discuss numerous independent variables seen across studies. These independent variables are analyzed as causes of worse or better performance. One example of this is perceptual coherence. Low perceptual coherence, also known as local coherence, um, is where an image or shape can clearly be seen in the design. Um, so to the right, we see that the uppermost design displays a solid diagonal line. As we shift downward, we see that the blocks become more randomized and there is no perceptual coherence or shape. Um, 
So that is referred to as having a design having high perceptual coherence um, or global coherence. This is shown to, to affect the performance of individuals um, trying to recreate the design. The findings vary across studies, but the general trend is that low perceptual coherence correlates to better performance. So one would typically perform better when trying to recreate the uppermost diagonal line design um, and high perceptual coherence correlates with worse performance. So the general trend would be that someone completing the lowermost design as shown on the right would perform worse. Also in the review, the main discussion is geared toward dependent variables displayed across numerous studies. Um, there are many de de dependent variables that can be measured. One example being the placement of the first blocks. Um, this also might depend on which side the block bank is located, but some studies have measured whether the participant favors placing blocks on a particular side first, primarily to measure any cognitive differences displayed in participants um, on whether they prefer a certain side to begin or not. Um, for example, this variable was measured to determine whether participants of varying ages utilize different strategies for completing the task. Um, additionally, this variable was used to record any differences seen in participants with alcoholism and participants with unilateral brain damage. In general, no differences have been found um, between populations. So for instance, no differences have been found yet between um, a control group versus participants with alcoholism or unilateral brain damage. Another example of a dependent variable um, is discussed in the review um, and was a measure of how, or is a measure of how a participant, um, how much a participant references a design as determined by their eye gaze. Um, this dependent variable can be either measured with eye tracking technology or in a digital version of the block design, it could be measured with like a, with a mouse over <laughs> or a click to um, reveal parts of the design and therefore measure how many times the design is referenced. This variable is used to record different strategies among participants and record any differences among various individuals. This variable has been measured to display um, different, any differences in the strategies of children versus adults. Um, and it has also been used with participants having Williams syndrome against a control group. Um, the findings were that the participants with Williams syndrome referenced the design less frequently than the control group. The last variable we will be discussing in this presentation is the most commonly studied error, the broken configuration error. This is an error where a block is placed outside the area of the design. The design area is the two by two grid shown in the example on the left, but depending on the size of the design, it can also be a three by three grid or a four by four grid. The third most block in this example is what makes this a broken configuration error because it is outside the design area. This error is commonly measured in populations with brain injuries and older adults, where it is more common than in people without brain injuries and younger adults, showing it could be an indicator of cognitive processing issues. Broken configuration errors are also measured as an indicator of strategy where people who take a trial and error approach to the block design test show more broken configuration errors. In a trial and error strategy, a person will often place a block down on the table as they are deciding which way to rotate it to fit in with the design, thus creating more broken configuration errors. If a person takes a more global view of the design and visualizes where they place each block, before setting it down, they will not show as many broken configuration errors. In addition to the variables we've identified in the literature in our paper, we have also identified a few variables we think would be interesting to look at in future work. The first of these is the orientation of the box in the block bank. This would include if a person picks up blocks in the specific orientation they're looking for, or if they rotate them on the way to the construction area. The second variable is the duration of first fixation or the time before construction begins. 
This variable is shown in the visualization on the left. The third variable is adding one block versus multiple to the construction area. And the fourth is practice effects within specific designs. This last variable refers to if a participant is faster in placing their blocks in the second half of the design versus the first half because they have learned what, how to place certain graphical objects. In the last decade, technology has advanced rapidly which has implications for the implementation of the block design test. One advanced technology is more advanced sensors, such as depth cameras and wearable eye trackers. Both of these allow researchers to gather uh, real-time data about the person, such as where they are looking, or record where their hand is moving and what block they are manipulating. Another advanced technology is computer-based inter interfaces. These have been around since the 90s, but have been advancing in the last so couple years to give us the same information as these advanced sensors, such as how often a participant looks at the design, how often they rotate each design before placing it, and so on. The last two advancements are advancements in algorithms. A pattern recognition algorithm would allow researchers to go from raw data, such as pixels from a camera, and turn that into meaningful behavioral measurements, such as block rotation. Data mining algorithms allow researchers to go from these behavioral measurements to higher level patterns, such as does a person always rotate a block twice before placing it, or does a person take more time to place blocks uh, that are diagonal versus box the single red or white colored face. This is the end of our presentation. Uh, we hope you enjoyed watching.